hello so this and um, part two three part three i think uh, of this video series i'm going to show you how to do the color work for these christmas baubles um part one shows you how to do the increases at the bottom uh so if you haven't watched that go and look for part one uh part two there's two part twos really um one part two which is this one i'm going to show you how to do the color work then I did another part two where I show you how to do the beaded pattern. So I actually showed you how to do this one. So I have the beads and the, but there's two choice of two beaded patterns, this one and this one. And this one's a lot bigger. I'm not quite sure why. It does have a couple of more rounds than the beaded pattern. It's got um, 12 rounds instead of 10 rounds. But it's also the diameter or the circumference, sorry, is bigger as well. So I'm not quite sure why because it's the same yarn and the same needle size. Um, and then the final part, I show you how to do the decreases at the top and how to uh, finish off and stuff the um, Christmas ball. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do the color work. I'm actually going to show you how to do the diamond kind of shaped color work, which also has beads. So I'm using W. Abraham size six beads, which I sell in my online shop. Uh, I like those. They're good quality beads. Um, I'm using 0 0.75 crochet hook. To add the beads and i also have a row counter to keep track of which row i'm on so i'm not going to knit through the whole of this chart uh, because that would take too long i'm just going to do the first three rounds so then i can show you how to add the bead as well so to start with i have taken the contrasting yarn i'm using lang marina 120 lang marina 120 uh, for this which is a dk yarn and i'm using 3.75 millimeter needles and the link to the pattern will be below this video. So I'm going to take the tail and put it through that hole in the bottom of my ball, just so it's kind of out of the way and I don't accidentally knit with it. So you don't need a massively long tail, just one that's long enough to knit, um, to weave in afterwards. So I'm going to show you how to do this knitting one colour continental and one colour English style. Now, I'm not a very good English style knitter. I'm also going to show you just very quickly how to do both colours continental if you are a continental knitter, uh, which is the way I normally knit. So um, to show you how, so we're going to do continental style with our uh, left hand and English style with our right hand. So to hold the yarn continental style, take it, um, I'm going to do grey because that's the yarn I'm using the most and I'm better at continental style. So take the yarn over the your index finger under the other fingers and then I just close um, my fingers around it and I hold it with my needle. Now for some people that might be too loose so you can wrap it around your little finger and you can also try and weave it in and out of your fingers like that or wrap it around your little finger. So there are various ways you can tension your yarn. If you want to know more about continental knitting I do have an online course on it. So that's continental knitting. So I'm going to knit and then you go into the stitch you just hold your finger behind the first stitch on your needles. All your stitches are fairly close to the needle tip. Both hands are fairly close to the needle tip. A lot of English style knitters knit like that. And when we change to do one color in each hand, you might struggle to hold your need to do that if you hold the yarn like this. But for most continental knitters, holding the needles like this is easier with the fingers quite close to the needle tip on both needles. So I'm basically holding the needles the same. But if you normally knit English style like this, you may want to hold it like this when we introduce the second colour. So I'll leave it up to you to decide, but experiment with the different options. So I'm going to put my needle in and then just grab that yarn and pull it through. I'm going to do three grey stitches first. So put my needle in, grab the yarn and pull it through. If you're new to continental knitting, you might want to practice that a little bit first. Needle in, just like when I put my needle in, you should, I don't know if you can see it, but you should see the working yarn at the back, so you can just grab it and pull it back through. Okay, so that's the three stitches I'm going to knit. Then I'm going to do one purple. So now I'm not an English style knitter, so I'm not very good at English style knitting. So the way I hold the yarn is just like that. A lot of people, as I said before, hold the needle like that, which I can't do. I also throw, so I let go of the needle and throw. A lot of people hold it like that and they just flick their finger, which I can't do. So 
If you want to learn English style knitting, you're not going to learn much from me because I'm not very good at it. So I'm going to knit the next stitch with the purple one. Then I'm going to knit a grey one, purple one, grey one, purple one. So I don't have to worry too much about the floats being too short or too long here because I'm just changing colour every other stitch. And then I'm going to knit two grey ones and that's the end of the repeat. So I should now have 10 stitches left, which I do, yeah. So I'm at the end of the first repeat, so I'm not going to go back and knit this repeat again. Now I've just done two grey stitches, and the next repeat starts with three grey stitches, which means five grey stitches in a row. Now, when you get longer floats, they can kind of dangle a bit, and if it's mittens or gloves or sweater sleeves or something like that, you can catch your finger in it. Can also here I just have like one stitch in the colour. If the float's really long, it can make the stitch a little bit floppy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to weave in the yarn on this next stitch, the weave in the contrasting colour that I'm not knitting with at the moment. Now you don't have to do this on these baubles because um, you're not going to put your fingers in them. <laughs> you know, they're not gloves or mittens or sleeves so you're going to risk catching your fingers in the floats. But I just want to show you how to do it. Um, so I'm going to go into the next stitch knitwise leave that needle leave the right hand needle there don't move it then I'm going to take the grey yarn and I'm going to lift it over the needle back to front so normally if I was going to knit it I'd go that way so I'm going to go the opposite way so back to front then I'm going to take my purple yarn and wrap that the yarn, yarn around the needle just as if I'm knitting it and you can see my needle is still at the back so I haven't moved it yet then I'm going to take that yarn and take it back again so unwrap it. So now I can pull that needle through to the front and I got that. Oh, just realized I've done that the wrong way. <laughs> okay, so that's the way you do it if you're knitting with a purple yarn. I'm not going to edit this out, I'm going to leave it. We are knitting with a grey yarn. So the way you do it when the yarn's in your left hand. So the way I just showed you is when you're knitting with the yarn in your right hand. If you're knitting with the yarn in your left hand, you take the right hand yarn, so the purple yarn first, Wrap it around as if you're going to knit it. Then do the uh, grey yarn. So I'm just going to take it over like that. And then unwrap. The, oh, hang on. It slipped over. So let's try that again. It's because it's too long. There we go. Let's try this again. So purple yarn, the right, as if you're going to knit it. The grey yarn, as if you're going to knit it. So you can see here, I've got both yarns over my needle now. And then I'm going to unwrap the purple yarn. And then finish it. So depending on which hand you're holding the grey in, so if you hold the, um, it depends on how you're going to do it. So just go back and see what I did because I showed you both ways. Um, so I'm going to knit two more grey and then I'm going to do purple, grey, purple, grey, purple, now, I'm going to, quite often when you change needles, um, you can get a little bit of a, so when I have the needles like that, so if you imagine if I finish knitting two, like I've done here, two stitches before the end of the needle, I haven't knitted the last stitch yet, then on the next needle, I'm going to do three grey ones. So it's very easy for the purple yarn to kind of do a shortcut across here, which will make the bauble kind of have like a puckered, side which means you I can't get it to be a circle like that um it would kind of pull in like pinch in like that which obviously wouldn't be very good so you have to make sure that the contrasting the yarn you're not knitting with goes all the way around that bend um, and the easiest way to do that is to actually weave it into that last stitch so let me let's go through that again so we're knitting I'm holding the gray yarn in my left hand so I'll show you both way. I'll do it the way I'm holding it first and then I'll swap over. So I'm going to take the yarn I'm not knitting with first and wrap it around as if I'm knitting. Then do the grey yarn. Then I unwrap that one and then I finish it. And it takes that purple yarn right into that last stitch. So if you're holding the yarn the opposite way, so if you're holding the yarn with the purple yarn in your left hand and the grey yarn in your right hand, let me just show you that. So if the grey yarn is in my right hand, 
I'm going to go in, take the purple yarn, the left hand yarn over the needle, wrap the grey yarn, the right hand yarn around as just as if you're knitting it, but unwrap the purple yarn and then through. Now this way it actually doesn't secure the next stitch until I've knitted the next grey stitch. I'm going to just swap the yarns back actually to my proper hand. So it doesn't secure it till I've knitted the next grey stitch. So just be aware of that. Okay, so I'm going to change my needles. If you're not sure about Magic Lube, watch the part one video. And I'm, I'll also, I also link my um, Magic Loop video as well, because I do have a separate video on that. Okay, so I'm going to knit the first three stitches in grey. And then... We're going to do one purple, one grey, one purple, one grey, whoops, I slipped off, one purple. Okay, and then I'm going to do one, two, and then I'm going to weave in the yarn on the next stitch. So because I got my grey in my left hand, I'm going to go in, do the purple one first, then the grey, unwrap the purple and then finish it um if you're holding the yarn the opposite and opposite way around hang on let me just undo this so if you're holding the yarn in your right hand you would take the left hand back to front then the right hand oh, hang on and then unwrap the left hand okay so let me do it the way i'm knitting again so the wrong yarn first then the correct yarn and then the wrong yarn and wrap it there we go that might have ended up in a bit of a blur, but we'll see. Okay. You can probably find more in-depth tutorials about this online if you look. Okay, so we're going to do one purple, one grey, one purple, one grey, one purple. Whoops. Purple. And then... I'm going to weave in the yarn into that last stitch again, so I don't get that shortcut, get the yarn taking the shortcut. Um, now, one problem with weaving in the yarn at the end is that you do get, I don't know if you can see it here, you see it here, you can just about see it here, the yarn does kind of, I don't know, it's not too obvious on this one, um, the yarn can sometimes like show through on the right side, and uh, that is a problem with the weaving in method. The alternative to that, if that's a problem, um, is to just basically drop the two yarns, manually twist them around each other. Light's being a little bit funny today. It was very dark when I started this video, and now it's got a bit brighter. It's overcast, but it's going from like bright to dark and back to bright again, and it's a bit of a pain, so I do apologise for that. Okay, so we're going to go on to round two. So round two, I'm actually going to, well, I'll, actually I'll show you this again the way I was knitting. And then on the round three, I'll show you how I actually knit holding both yarns continental style. So I've knitted the two in grey, and then I'm going to do one purple, purple, one grey, and then I'm going to do three purples. So one, two. Now, one thing you've got to be careful about when you've knitted several stitches in the same colour, when you go to knit the next colour, You've got to make sure that that strand that goes behind, so that grey strand, is long enough to cover those three stitches that I'm kind of bypassing. So it's not such a problem if you have just three stitches, but if you say have five stitches, if your stitches are all bunched up, then your float behind is going to be really short, which means that when you finish, it's going to be all puckered. So what I do before I knit the next colour when I have sort of like three stitches or more is I stretch the stitches out of my right hand needle and then I knit the next colour, and then if I need to, I'll pull it out again, just to make sure the float is long enough to go behind those uh, stitches. So I've done one grey, I'm going to do one purple, one grey, so I'm doing, and then two more grey, because I'm starting to repeat again. So again, I'm stretching it out of my right hand needle before I do the next purple stitch, and then if I feel like I need to, oh, let's split the stitch slightly, I can pull it out again. Make sure that float is long enough. You don't want it too long. You want it long enough to go past those stitches when they're stretched out. Um, one grey, three purple. 
one, two, three. Okay, you can tell I don't normally knit like this. Stretch them out and then knit one, two, and the last one. So I'm not going to weave in that purple colour into the last stitch because I've just used the stitch before the last stitch. So I think it'll be okay when I turn around. So I'm going to turn around. Now this time, so I'm halfway through round two. For the rest of this tutorial, I'm actually going to show you how I hold the yarn knitting two colours in my left hand. If you want to do both with your, uh, if you're an English style knitter and you want to do both with your right hand, I can't help you with that. I've seen videos of people holding one yarn over their index finger and one of their middle, middle finger and then just flicking one or the other, but I can't do it. But I do knit continental style, so I do hold both yarns continental style. Um, you might find the way I'm doing this difficult, I don't know, but basically if you're not continental style knitter, you, I wouldn't even try this. So I hold both hands, yarns over my hand like that, so they're going from the bottom, so if I just hold my hand out flat, take the two strands over it so that my knitting is at the top above my index finger and my ball end is below at the bottom, like that. And then I'm going to close those fingers, leave my index finger sticking up in the air, and I kind of wrap the yarn around, then with this index finger I'm going to take one strand off my that finger and I'm going to put it back on the other way and then I'm going to twist my hand around, pick up my needles and then to, t to tension it I, or tighten it I have to with my right hand pull here like that. So I've got one yarn here and one yarn here and then I can just pick whichever one I want to. So do that again, hand flat in front of you with your um, little finger at the bottom and your index finger at the top at the top and just keep your thumb out of the way. Put both strands over your finger, over your hand, sorry, with the, your knitting at the top like that. Close those three fingers, keep your index finger sticking straight out, kind of wrap the yarn around it and then take your index fingers. I usually use one of the fingers on my right hand. I take one yarn, lift it off and then put it back on the other way. So it's kind of, you've got one yarn going one way and one yarn going the other way and they kind of cross here. Then I twist my hand and my needles around and then I let go of my right hand and I tighten the yarn like that. This does not work very well if you're knitting a lot of stitches with one colour. So say I was doing 10 grey, 1 purple, 10 grey, 1 purple. This would not work very well. This works better if you're using this, both yarns the equal amount. So, this is how I knit. So I go in, and I grab the grey one for two stitches, and then I'm going to do a purple one. So I just go under the grey one and grab the purple one. Then I go over, grab the grey one. Then I'm going to do three purple. And again, make sure my flow's not too tight, so I pull it out of my right hand needle. One grey, one purple. Then I'm going to do one grey. So now I don't really need to. That was the post and my dog barking. Alfie, quiet. I always forget to put my dog in the kitchen when I record, and he barks when the postman comes. So hopefully he'll settle down. Okay, so if I was going to weave in the yarn behind on knitting it like this, so if I was going to, so I need to knit with a grey one next. I don't need to do it because I've only got three grey stitches in a row, but if I was going to do it, instead of taking a grey one from here, I would go behind the purple one, so I would go under both yarns, let's move that out of the way so you can see better, under both, into the stitch, under both strands, behind the purple one, between the purple and the grey and then around the grey one and pull it through the stitch. Okay, so it's a little bit more difficult and then I'm going to knit the next one as well. So I'll show you that again in a minute. So, um, right, so one purple, one grey, then I got three purple. So if I was knitting with the, the one I got at the back, if I want to weave that one in, I would go in 
instead of go under i would go over grab the purple one pull it back over the gray and straight through the stitch so it's probably a little bit more difficult but i find it quite easy and quick if you want to know more about how to knit like that do try and see if you can come to one of my online uh, sorry one of my continent uh, start again if you want to learn to knit like continental like that both yarns continental uh, or if you want to learn more about knitting with one yarn in each hand do see if you can come to one of my um feral knitting classes so i'll show you how to do that in my feral and sticking class in my basic feral class and in my silver mittens class okay so that's round two i'm going to carry on holding the yarn like this but you can carry on with the yarn in your one in each hand if you want to so round i'm going to show you the first half of round three and then i'm going to stop because i don't want this video to get too long so first stitch on round three is gray then i got purple but i just want to show you how to add the bead purple then i got a gray and then i got two purple and then i'm going to add a bead now one thing i want to explain because it um illustrates it really well on this chart so i'm just going to take a couple of beads out um you don't have to do beads if you don't want to but i quite like beads so i'm going to put both on my needle at the same time so if you look at the chart that's where the bead is that's round three that's where the bead is so it looks like you're putting the bead on the gray stitch but what you're actually doing because you're putting because the chart shows what your knitting looks like after you've knitted it so after i've knitted this row i'll have gray purple gray two purple gray so it looks like the bead is on the gray but you're actually beads going to end up on the purple because i'm putting the bead in before i knit that stitch so i'm going to put the bead in take the stitch off um pearl wise let it slide into the hook of the crochet hook grab the bead push it down onto the stitch and put the stitch back on your left hand needle i go into more depth about how to do this in the um tutorial for this one and now i'm going to knit it so you can see the beads gone on the purple stitch and i'll actually split that stitch slightly so i'm just going to make sure that stitch is okay and then i'm going to knit it so the bead actually ends up on the row below so even though it looks like i'm putting it in on this row well i am putting it in this row it looks like it's ending up on that gray stitch it's actually ended up on the stitch below which is why here it actually looks like that bead ends up on that stitch that bead ends up there that bead there and that bead there so if you just put the bead in on the row where they appear on this pattern they will end up on the correct stitch okay so lost track where i was i'm not going to do two purple two purple one gray one purple one gray back to the beginning of the repeat one purple one gray two purple it's a little bit loose i'm just going to tighten that gray one a little bit and then i'm going to put another bead on so i got it on my crochet hook already i'm going to take the stitch off pearl wise slide it into the hook grab the bead push it down onto the stitch quite firmly put the stitch back onto the bead if you find that your stitch um splits it's probably because you're either not being firm enough or the bead is too small um size six beads is a little bit small for dk yarn when you're adding it like this because you've got to take two strands of the yarn through the bead um, but it it does work because i've done two baubles with it so it does work if you're struggling pull that stitch quite tight so if you pinch your yarn with your finger thumb and in, uh, middle finger here and then pull the stitch taut then it makes the yarn a bit thinner and it's easier to pull the stitch uh, pull the bead down Put it back on my left needle i'm going to knit it with gray so the bead's gone on the purple because we put the bead on first and then we knit it so the bead actually end up on the row below the one that we're knitting and then i'm going to knit two purple one gray and one purple okay so we're halfway through round three i'm going to stop this video here because i don't want it to get too long um 
So if you want to go on to video number, part number three, I'm going to show you how to, in part three, I'm going to show you how to finish off the top of the bobble, how to do the decreases, when I weave in the ends, um, and then how to stuff it and finish it off at the top. So I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in part three.